Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Well, episode six of Star Trek Picard, The Impossible Box. Finally, we got our crews coming together, this action that's going on in the Borg Cube, and our crew with Picard on board the La Serena finally came together in one episode. We had Picard and Hugh reuniting. We had Soji finally activating. Let's take a look at episode six, The Impossible Box. Well, like all episodes of Star Trek Picard, we begin with a flashback. This time with Soji when she's a young girl. She's woken up in the middle of the night with the, one of these implanted memories of her on a thunderous night, uh, getting out of bed to try to find out what her father's doing in the laboratory, uh, breeding orchids or something. And she wakes up uh, after being sort of told off for being out of bed. She wakes up in her bed next to Narek, and obviously uh, she's still trying to be probed for information here by him. It's an ongoing process, it would seem, that he's just constantly trying to elicit information from her. So it definitely seems like Soji is waking up to herself at this point, where she's kind of asking a few questions of Narek. She's a little bit suspicious of him too, and his motives. Uh, and at the end of this scene, she's looking at a photo of her and her mum and her sister. She's not at all convinced that her history is exactly what it seems. And you can see the walls starting to crumble about her backstory. So next we get a scene back on board the La Serena where Picard and Girati and Elnor are talking about infiltrating the Borg cube and how Picard's not really looking forward to it. He hasn't had the best of experiences on Borg cubes in the past and he's kind of trying to uh, uh, maybe deal with his emotions uh, in terms of uh, going back to one. Also in this scene, Girati tells Picard about what happened to Maddox, and Picard seems to dismiss it all kind of very quickly. There's no question, she just says, oh yep, he, his injuries were too bad and he died. Um, there weren't really any questions by Picard at all to question his state of uh, health or anything like that. He kind of just uh, took Girati's word for it. That all seems to have been swept under the carpet quite quickly and forgotten about. Although Elnor seems to be a little bit more cued into Girati's emotions because at the end of this scene he perhaps senses that there's some piece of information that she's desperately trying to forget which is obviously in reference to something that Commodore O has shown her. So she seems a bit put out by Elnor sensing this aspect about her and Picard is very apprehensive about traveling back to this Borg cube. So after this chat with Girati and Elnor, Picard's kind of got a bit stirred up over this. So he goes back to his holodeck uh, vineyard office and does a bit of research on the computer, brings up uh, some information on the Borg and the Romulan Treaty. He comes across a photo of Hugh and he seems to be surprised and somewhat reassured that his old buddy Hugh Borg is on board the Romulan reclamation site and he is also the executive director in charge. So here is a little bit of an in that Picard has got with the Borg Cube. And you can tell that Picard is still quite uh, disturbed about his experiences with the Borg. He is not relishing going back to this cube one little bit. And at the end of this thing, we have a nice little symmetrical shot where he's got a picture of himself as Locutus, which has come up as part of one of the images in the computer database. As he's looking through the screen, the camera kind of tracks around. His face and the Borg face overlay each other. It appears like the Borg implants are back on his face and uh, he starts grabbing at his face. He's obviously going through some interesting psychological moments here, bringing back all these unfortunate memories of his. So as our crew now enter what used to be the neutral zone, uh, Rios is having a bit of a uh, recreation session, kicking a soccer ball around the deck. So here comes the gratuitous shirt off moment for the ladies to see uh, San Diego Cabrera with his shirt off, doing a bit of late night exercising with a soccer ball. And Rios and Girardi have a little bit of exchange here on the uh, deck late at night about how things aren't sitting quite well with Girardi. She's obviously just switched the life support off intentionally on Maddox. She's obviously struggling with this decision. Whatever this information that she knows that perhaps Commodore O has planted within her mind, it is 
weighing on her quite heavily. She lists off all these emotions that she's feeling and she needs a bit of, uh, well, let's just say uh, grown-up time downstairs in the living quarters uh, below decks and below the sheets just so she can perhaps feel better about herself and uh, whatever this information is that she knows. So next we have a scene with Nerissa and Narek talking about how they're going to get this information out of Soji and we get the usual amount of heavy breathing in the ears and all the usual kind of uh, slightly not quite right brother sister goings on in this scene as we have before and Narek thinks he kind of knows how he can subtly poke her, <laughs> pardon the pun, to um, get the information out of her that's required. So back on the La Serena, Rios is a bit concerned. They're obviously entering Romulan space. They've got to get onto this Borg cube. He's kind of saying, how the hell are we going to do this? This is ridiculous. So when things look impossible and they're never going to succeed and that it's going to be way too hard for them to get on board this Borg cube, we just take the kind of most easiest solution, which is just ask the Federation for permission and they'll just give you a certificate which says you can just get access to the Borg Cube nice and easy, simply. <laughs> it was a little bit convenient. Uh, it was okay. Raffi had to call in a favour from an old Starfleet captain that she was obviously on very good terms with. But at the end of the day, they asked for permission and they got their permission granted and now they're just happy to uh, get on board the Borg Cube, no questions asked. It was a tiny bit convenient that they didn't have to go to any huge effort or do any kind of caper mission or anything like this to sneak on board. I thought, oh, how are they going to get on board this cube? This is going to be, oh, it's going to be some caper mission and they're going to, uh, they're going to sneak on board and it's all going to be having to hide and mask their signature to get in and no just ask permission federation captain just says yep no worries tick the box on you go <laughs> so it, it was look it, it was fine it showed a bit of history with raffi uh, asking permission and asked for the relative credentials and everything from her former starfleet captain that she was uh on good terms with. Back on our Borg cube, Narek and Soji having a bit of a chat about these dreams that she's been having. Narek kind of flags Soji's communications with her mum, which she does every night. Every one of Soji's calls is lasting for exactly 70 seconds. Mum AI program that speaks to Soji is programmed to have her lapse into a state of unconsciousness after a minute or so on the phone to her. I'm sure we've all had situations where our mum perhaps is uh, is boring us to sleep, but it is happening every night. She's seeing flashes of images of her father, but it's out of focus. So Soji is kind of quite disturbed about this. So Picard's clearly apprehensive about beaming over to this Borg cube. He's having flashback moments of him as Locutus, but they've been given the relative clearances they need to beam over onto the Borg cube. Elnor's trying to fight for Picard, saying, hey, dude, I'm coming with you. I'm, I'm going to be there to, as your bodyguard. And Picard's saying, no, the authorization only permits me to go and me alone. So in our next scene, we see Soji starting to unravel as she uh, gets all manner of uh, keepsakes, photos, memorabilia and whatnot from her past. And the first thing she does is get a old kids lunchbox out of her uh, cupboard or chest or whatever. Nice little uh, Easter egg here back from Star Trek Voyager. Her lunchbox that she has all her photos in is The Adventures of Flotter. Was the uh, the hollow novel that I believe Neelix would play with Naomi Wildman. It looks like uh, Soji has a uh, Adventures of Flotter lunchbox based on this, what is probably a famous kids hollow novel as established on Voyager. So that's a nice little Easter egg to see. And Soji proceeds to scan all of her photos and her diary and her necklace and you name it and everything is 37 months old. Uh, so she's having a bit of a meltdown at this point. Not that happy about everything because, uh, yeah, she is starting to realise that her life is one big fat lie. So as Picard gets beamed up on board the Borg cube, things are a little bit uneasy for him. He's having flashy images of other Borg moments, drones, shots and scenes and memories of other occasions he's encountered the Borg. And it's clearly messing with his head quite a bit. And out of the shadows comes our trusty friend Hugh Borg, uh, who we have not seen for quite many years, and Picard is 
clearly very happy to see Hugh and Hugh is very happy to see Picard. This is a nice touching scene. These guys haven't seen themselves for many years. Picard obviously was instrumental in freeing Hugh from the Borg and that hasn't been forgotten. These guys have a nice touching little reunion there and it's, uh, it's, a, it's a lovely scene to see. So Picard and Hugh have a bit of a stroll around the hallways of the Borg cube. Hugh now calls himself and all the uh, former rescue drones XBs, standing for ex-Borgs or former Borgs. And there's a nice little moment between these two where uh, Hugh uh, remembers when he was given a new name on board the Enterprise and that being the first step in regaining some of your individuality. So there was a little nice little callback to uh, Next Generation there and, and Hugh's involvement in that uh, in that episode. Picard tells Hugh about uh, Soji and uh, and why he's come to the Borg Cube, and uh, Hugh says, "Okay, yep, I know Soji. Let's go. Let's go find her." So, meanwhile, back in her quarters, Soji is kind of wigging out. Uh, she now knows that she's no more than three years old, or whatever, and that people have be, been concocting her backstory, and, and that all of this stuff is all made up. And she's confided in Narek, bad idea, to help her uncover the secret behind this mystery of hers. And he suggests going and having a bit of a meditation session in this special Romulan uh, meditation room. See if they can uncover some hidden information as to Soji's background. So Picard and Hugh take a bit of a stroll around the hallways and come across a room. It's a bit of an ex-Borg beauty salon where their implants are getting removed, their skin's getting a bit of a touch-up, a bit of a smooth over, a bit of a hairdo <laughs> and a bit of a makeup job to bring them back to the people that they perhaps used to be or a little bit closer to them. And Picard is really impressed. He's saying, Hugh, you're doing such great work here. I never imagined that, you know, Borg could be uh, unassimilated to this level. It's inspiring work that what's being done to, uh, to repair these poor victims who had been assimilated and trying to give them their lives back. And Picard is, uh, is quite enamoured with uh, Hugh's project here and all that it is achieving. So Narek and Soji go into our Romulan meditation room and uh, he explains uh, how it's basically going to bring up all these hidden memories uh, that Soji is so eager to uh, dig out of her subconscious. And we also find out in this scene that uh, Narek's real name is Khriyan. Um, I think I'll just stick to Narek. It's far easier to pronounce than Khriyan. So Picard and Hugh find Soji's quarters and realise she's not there. Uh, she's off having a meditation session with Narek. And Picard reckons she is pretty close to working out who she really is. So they quickly bring up the schematic of the Borg cube and work out exactly where she is uh, on board because they've got to get her out of there pretty quickly. So Soji regresses back to her childhood implanted memories and works out that her father is like a faceless man with kind of no identity which sort of confirms the fact that he's a concoction. She looks around the lab and she sees herself as like a, a doll in pieces to uh, confirm in her mind that she is in fact uh, a put together android. And then Narek urges her to look around and look up and all that sort of stuff. And she finds out looking out the window to the sky that she's in a planet that has two moons and constant electrical storms, which was the key to the puzzle that Narissa and Narek have been trying to get out of Soji for weeks uh, in the fact that they now have tangible piece of information to go on to find out where all these other synths happen to be. Narek says his goodbyes to Soji, locks her in the meditation room and leaves his little uh, puzzle box behind, which opens up to reveal what some of us might remember from the beginning of Star Trek Nemesis a Thaleron radiation uh, thing which then shoots a whole bunch of radiation into the air, which is obviously highly toxic. But because Soji's an android, uh, she can probably uh, stay in this environment for a little bit longer than your average humanoid. 
So uh, she starts pounding the crap out of the floor, rips up the floor plates and jumps down a hole. She comes crashing through the ceiling onto the deck below where Picard kind of says, oh, I'm, I'm here to help her. I know your sister Daj. Uh, she came to me and I wasn't able to help her. Let me help you. So off they all go together on the run being pursued and end up in the Borg Queen's chamber. And it seems like the Borg Queen's chamber has had a couple of upgrades since back in the day where it now has kind of like an emergency transport system installed in it where um, the Borg Queen in the moments of emergencies can transport herself to the nearest system uh, to take refuge in the case of a catastrophic attack of some kind. So this special technology that the Borg have for transporting between worlds was apparently acquired when the Borg uh, assimilated the Sakarians, a race of aliens we saw in Star Trek Voyager. We saw their technology, Janeway was going to use it to get the Voyager home a bit sooner, uh, but they couldn't quite crack a deal with these Sakarians. It's always great to see little bits of information like this from Voyager uh, or any other show coming back into Picard. So Hugh activates the window just as the Romulans come to attack them. But don't fear because our friend Elnor has come to save the day just at the right moment. He uh, uh, engages in some quite lethal maneuvers as we have seen him uh, engage in previously with all manner of disembowelings and head choppings off and limb dismemberment and stabbings and everything. Uh, he seems to be such a nice kid too before he goes uh, dismembering people. But that's obviously his talent. And Elnor stays back to hold the hold the line while Soji and Picard make it safely through the transporter off to some system somewhere before quickly telling Rios and crew to meet them at a particular planet to pick them up. All in all, I thought this was a pretty good episode. I think it was great to see some action on board the Borg Cube rather than just uh, angsty whispering in ears and <laughs> and brother sister <laughs> caressing and all that sort of stuff so it was good to have some action and it was absolutely great to see picard and hugh reunite in this episode that was certainly a highlight so next week we've got uh, deanna troy and will Riker. it would seem coming into this show uh, picard and uh, Soji are obviously transported off to uh, somewhere called Nep Nepenthe, wherever that might be. So uh, maybe, I don't know, maybe Nepenthe is, uh, is uh, where Riker and Troy have their holiday house, perhaps. So it'll be great to see what happens in the next episode with uh, Riker and Troy making an appearance in that. Uh, as always, guys, thank you so much for watching my review of this episode. Uh, please don't forget to subscribe, like, share, uh, and comment on this video. Uh, it really helps me out, and I will see you very soon for my next review.